Hello, Internet. So I'm going to do um, a bit of a multi-part video here because um, typically audiences uh, uh, got different interests uh, in some of the stuff I do here. Um, so this is the next phase of what I call my uh, Neo Luminate um, dynamic rear LED strip. Um, I, I make a kit. Um, some may recognize this guy here and this rear um, silicon LED strip from Mazda Miata ND2s and NDs. Um, and the idea is it's got a bunch of sequences um, that you can control via this controller here. Um, I started this in my own uh, ND2 and I've evolved it and, and I'll put a link to um, some of the videos that I have uh, over time. I've evolved it over time uh, with a, a controller in the front uh, in, in the dash console down, down near um, where the micro SD card is mounted. Um, and I wanted to take that to the next step. So I've come up with this, this guy here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and get into the weeds a little bit later for, um, those who love the technical stuff. Um, first off, before I get started, I want to give a huge shout out to Matt P from the UK. Um, I've been using the Lilygo TRGB 2.8 inch display here and, uh, the Arduino GFX library. Uh, the display library by, uh, I think it's, his name is Moon on Our Nation, so cheers to him too, um, uh, to get the display where I wanted it, but I, I really wanted to use um, what I'll call layering, um, the technical terms is sprites, uh, and I'll show that in a second, but it's about, you know, be able to do dynamic stuff with graphics, not having to redraw the entire screen and all that fun stuff, so I'll show that in a second. Anyway, kudos to those guys, um, and particularly Matt, uh, for helping, you know, him and I worked for over a month on the Sprite class um, while I, you know, I tested and he built. Um, so anyway, without further ado, I'm going to, I'm going to also turn off the lights a little bit later, show this, you know, so you can see what this video looks like. But essentially what this is, is um, it's a vent mounted display, 3D printed um, unit here. Uh, the screen is mounted in that unit. Uh, there's actually space for air to flow around um, the unit here. This guy here is just a um, RTC clock um, peripheral, and I actually have uh, maybe one or two more that I'm gonna do later. Idea is that this guy lets me control the strip from inside the car uh, and what it's doing. Um, you know, it has a default state, um, and then I can actually initiate from the screen the actual sequence here. And then when it's done, it'll update. It's on running light mode. And then I can, at any time, I can change or save a, a new sequence. And, and also, you can see here, this is the use of the Sprite class. Um, it's quite nice. Doing some really funky stuff with Sprites. Multiple Sprites here, the arrows, including the, um, uh, the actual graphic for each uh, of the sequences. Um, zooming in and out. And I'll show some layering here as well in, in a minute. Basically, I can change this guy. Here's the layering view of that sequence. Uh, sorry, that... Sprite pops up over top of the actual um, sequence name and then allows me to keep that graphic, which is quite, quite nice. So anyway, you know, here's a quick change. I actually just wanted to play that sequence. Um, I can also save it uh, to EEPROM so that it, later on when the car starts, it'll actually use the sequence um, in the future. So really cool options here um, that I'm about to build with that Sprite class. This screen is um, just a status screen, so I can check the, the, you know, obviously in your car, you don't really know that this is working. So this gives me an idea, um, you know, of checking, checking the status and, you know, just if something's up. Um, also, this screen here with the red on here is an actual status indicator as well. Uh, and then um, I've also got options where I can change um, the brightness settings as well as the actual clock um, face. I can go from actually a, a analog clock face and then obviously to change to any of the digital clock faces so I can save that change it back and also can change colors so I can change the actual watch face the basically the theme color and also the brightness can be saved um, to memory so that I can adjust that up, you know, I'm going to probably, um, add in a, um, light sensor into this 
and have brightness automatically adjust depending on um, you know whether I'm driving in the dark or the light because the screen can be quite bright um, you know in, in in the dark and I don't want it you know blurring in my my face. <laughs> Um, also note, this is, uh, I plan on mounting this vent uh, in the right side vent, right of the driver's wheel, this guy here. So that's a, you know, a high level, I guess, of the features and functions of this thing. Um, I wanted to show, get into a little bit more of the weeds. Um, I'm going to turn off the lights just to show you what the sequences look like in the dark. And then I'll get into a bit of a chat about how these sprites work, because um, it's only just been released. <laughs> Uh, and I think it's been integrated into the actual GFX uh, library. So there's an idea of sequence playing. So that's the bounce sequence. And I got all kinds. I got, I think, a total of 19, 18 sequences, I think, with a demo mode that does um, everything uh, all, up, all together. So if you're at a car show and you want to show off this craziness you got here in the back of your car, you can do that. Again, I've got a link uh, down below where if you wanted to pick up one of these kits, uh, obviously not with this, but the kit that you can, um, uh, you know, purchase for your ND or ND2. I'll put that link below. Simple red sweep. Blue sweep goes to red. So just some ideas about different sequences. Bear with me for a second. I'll turn the lights back on. So just on the note of um, the, the you know these sequences, sorry not the sequences, the sprites. Um, I wanted to show you. I'll go in offline state here. Just another idea. So if the back just happens to be disconnected, um, you know when you try to. Now of course I got a bit of a bug here. Let me just switch the screen. It's supposed to pop up um, a disconnection, a disconnected option. So here's an example of. Um, sprite that I you know have come up when it's in disconnected state um, so I'm going to show you on the screen here just what that looks like um, actually sorry, not that what that one looks like we'll go over to um, the clock and the brightness and I want to show you you know the, the sprites the way they work is um, you basically create a multi-image uh, sprite that's you know spans um, uh, a certain width and then you basically uh, choose which image within that sprite you want to use. So, you know, this is not a set of separate images. This is a single image that I'm just basically navigating to the next one in the array uh, of of the same image. And again, I'll pop that up. That's the same for um, the actual brightness slider and also the same for uh, all of the sequences. It, it's actually quite a long image. I think it's 3,900 pixels wide. And again, it's just shifts to the next image in the sequence and, and does this funkiness based on some zooming in, like some coding. But anyway, it's um, it's really easy to use. It, it sounds difficult. If you look at the code at first, it's a bit uh, daunting when you look at it, but within minutes, I was up and running with the help of Matt, um, you know, working with his um, sprite class. And it's actually very easy and very intuitive um, and quite powerful. So really impressed with uh, the work he's done to bring this to the next level. You know, the other option, some people have gone this route with the different displays is, um, that's called LVGL. And, you know, you can use it to do some really robust graphics um, work, but but it's got a lot of overhead from the perspective of learning, learning curve, and just, you know, just the way you work with it. Um, it's a lot like if any of you use the NextGen, uh, the NextGen product and, and their, um, their software, which I've actually done work on as well. It's just a whole new way of doing things and it actually generates a lot of code for you. And quite honestly, I find it very uh, confusing with the amount of code that gets generated and then, and then using that code. Um, you know, I don't mind writing, um, you know, doing things a little bit more um, old school and writing out code to make these things happen. It's really not that hard to do. And a lot of it's repeat. Once you've done it once, you can reuse it for all the other parts you use. Um, anyway, so yeah. Um, that's about it for this update. I'll probably do another update once I get this into my ND2 uh, and replace my existing one. Again, I have not this, but these kits available. I custom build them. 
um, I call it Neo Illuminate, and um, has about, uh, again, 18, 19 sequences, if I recall correctly. Um, so have a look at it if you're interested. And if you like this and you want to hear more, please uh, like and subscribe um, to this channel so you can get updated on you know what what's what's going on in the world of on my making things. So thanks for listening, folks. Take care. Ciao.